daybreak here on Arise News. Time for the press preview. A first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive. Let's take a look at this day, our sister publication. Leading headline this morning coming from the Chief of Army Staff, Yahya. Army will contain all threats to nation's sovereignty. He says operations against saboteurs raised all production to 1.3 million barrels per day. That leading photo on the front page this morning, the inauguration of the National Media Complaints Commission, also known as the uh, National Ombudsman, yesterday in Lagos. Above the nameplate of this day this morning, Human Rights Commission cautions MBC over sanctioning of media houses and then Nigerian media owners unveil National Complaints Commission. Gunshots, violence disrupt APC PDP's visit to INEX office in River State. Meanwhile, Donald Trump arrives in New York ahead of today's historic arraignment. All right, the Guardian newspaper. Afeni Ferre Ohaneze, Arawa Youths reject interim government plot. It has some four writers there. Adeban Ajay remains suspended, has no right to issue statement. For Anthony Ferrer, Ndibo, not part of any conspiracy uh, plans to attend Tinibu's swearing in. Uh, decide presidential petitions before May 29. This is coming from Albacoba. He's still in the tribunal. And Natives stage peaceful march, vows to resist moves to truncate democratic rule. The Punch newspaper. Leading headline ahead, uh, handover. Military vows crack down on security threats, one IPOB and others. The leading photo there, you can see that was in Portakot, where one person was killed and scores injured as Rivers, APC, and PDP supporters clash. Ohaneze, Tunubu, Samolu, others mourn Audrey Zokalu's wife. Above the nameplate of the punch this morning, you have IATA warning Nigeria as airlines trapped funds with $802 million. All right. The, uh, the, sorry, the Tribune. Uh, gunshots, just a story. Uh, the same story from Punch. Gunshots in Port Harcourt as APC PDP supporters clash with some riders there over inspection of electoral materials. Tonya Cole uh, escapes being lynched. PDP accuses APC of instigating uh, violence. Then there you see reps speakership. PDP alliance plot suffers setback. And then just on the top mass there, uh, Delta APC crisis deepens. Party expels Omagege. The story is around Omagege and uh, Cairo Ojubo. They are imposters, a uh, state chairman. Yeah, uh, the MPC was MPS was talking about this yesterday to me. Some international papers, the Independent newspaper. You have a photo there of Adaya Tripova, who was detained after CCTV appeared to show her carrying a package before a blast that killed a pro-Putin uh, pro blogger. And just below that, how could he keep shooting after hearing her terrified screams? That's from mother of nine-year-old Olivia's anguishes killer, Thomas Cashman, is jailed for minimum of 42 years. The Times... The Times, almost, no, not Financial Times, that, all right, uh, let's look at uh, The Guardian then. Let, let's have The Guardian, all right, uh, revealed CBI in turmoil following new claims of sexual misconduct. And then just uh, there, Manchester must face up to links to slavery. Trump files, flies into New York ahead of court appearance. You can see Trump's picture there. All right, for the press review, let's bring in Emmanuel Bello, who joins us now. Good morning, Emmanuel. Thanks morning. for being here. Let's take a look at this day newspaper and what the chief of army staff is saying. It's issuing a stern warning. He says, look, the army will contain any single threat of Nigeria's uh, sovereignty. And he goes ahead to say, look, some of our operations against sabotage have raised all production to 1.3 million barrels per day, just giving uh, an account of what they've been doing and the results that have come out from them. Manuel, what are your thoughts? 
Well, yes, Nkechi, um, uh, well, the army has uh, bragging rights now, um, especially the fact that they were able to prosecute a peaceful, uh, or, uh, you know, the cons um, relatively peaceful poll, especially in the southeast where I th I'm sure everybody thought there won't be elections and that it's going to be tough. Uh, we're inundated with pictures and images of uh, IPOB and other, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, and other uh, uh, outfits in this in this in the south east that we're saying that uh, there won't be elections but the army now saying that uh, thanks to it and thanks to what they've been able to do uh, there were peaceful elections or at least uh, what looked like peaceful polls in the south east where we thought nothing of such nature will, will happen especially because of the warnings uh, by those groups saying that look they will not allow for election but it's gone beyond that uh, they, they, uh, the army is now saying that look they are going to do the other thing that the nigerian army is you know, constitutionally empowered to do, which is to protect democracy. And the way they want to go about that is to warn about uh, warn troublemakers. And there is this this talk in Kenya about uh, interim government up to now. And one of the you know in the story you see some of the top military men saying that they don't even understand why that talk is there in the first place. Who is going to bring in the interim government? How are you, how are you going to have an interim government without the you know the, uh, the connivance or even the you know it's uh, uh, without the you you know the support of the current government you don't just uh, establish an interior government it doesn't just come out of the air uh, we saw what happened during the end of Econ interior government it's government itself that we you know put such a thing in place so the army is saying here that look it's just empty talk and that there are, you, uh, nobody can just plot it from the outside and that it's not a coup uh, and if it's issue of coups the military is assuring us that look it has no plans to truncate democracy and that it's going to uh, do everything is part to ensure that uh, what we have as democracy remain the same. It's the sort of reassurances that we like to Democrats, politicians, and uh, you know, and of course the rest of us, the civil community, would like to hear from the army because nobody is interested in any truncation of this democracy because at the heart of it, democracy is still the best form of government. Uh, if you, uh, no matter how uh, it's, it's it's procured, so. Uh, this uh, assurance is coming from uh, the, you know, the, 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 the military, and I think it's, uh, it's very timely, it's very important. Ketchi, I don't know if you saw that picture of our leaders uh, in the front page of this day. A uh, beautiful array of people that uh, some of us worked with. Uh, our chairman is there, looking uh, radiant. Uh, Kabiru Yusuf of Daily Trust. Uh, Sam, uh, uh, you know, uh, Sat Sam, like the column of the Vanguard newspaper, and all the other Eugenia Abu, all the other leaders. Uh, I couldn't but actually have to see uh, to look at that picture. I mean, since you've uh, mentioned it now, let's talk about why that picture is there yes. and what they've inaugurated yesterday. The National Complaints Commission. They said it's to serve as an independent forum to resolve complaints about press quickly fairly and also free of charge and while we're on that you have the human rights commission cautioning mbc over sanctions of media houses emmanuel yeah you know the media has come under a lot of you know pressure uh, especially from the campaigns uh, you know uh, be, be some of the tough talks that are coming from especially the apc and looking at the rules of the media remember the kind of uh, battles we had here in Kechi when uh, this network wanted uh, you know was just doing town halls uh for candidates and some of them saying that they will not you know attend and then the tough talks that were coming from the APC campaign and uh, it looks as if we're on the trial practically uh, so yes this is very timely too that the media is coming together because it's the sort of interpretations where we give this development that a lot of people are relying on we guide them we educate them and we also actually influence uh, the thinking um, out there so this is how important the media has become especially this season uh, during uh, and of course, uh, before, during, and after the elections, and so this kind of body is very important, so that you know we can restore. Because there were people, there were politicians who were trying to cast doubts on what we report and the professionalism and the hard work that we put into it, you know, to bring the story uh, to the people. Uh, and in an era of fake news and attack on media people, media houses, and all of that, uh, you need to see our leaders coming together and charting a way forward uh, in such a way that. Uh, the media will be fair to all and that those complaints coming from individuals will be taken seriously uh, so that uh, we don't also become the ones victimizing people uh, even though we shout all the time that we get victimized that we are very fair to everyone because that's our role to be there for everybody very important uh, you think that elections are over 
and everything that has to do with violence it should come to an end but that doesn't seem to be the case in River State where uh, gunshots in Port Harcourt were heard as APC and PDP supporters clash and Toyo Ko was I was on tally this morning talking about how he was wounded on his left hand uh, his the cars shattered and they weren't allowed to get to INEC office to take materials for them uh, to go to court what do you make of that well, that's sad, and it's uh, sort of the, the kind of the we are seeing now around this, uh, you know, the crisis around the issue of uh, these elections, where those protests and, uh, of course, the tough talk coming from uh, some of the rulers, especially in River State, that has become practically the, you know, uh, the battleground uh, between the APC and the, and the PDP. But certainly, in other places too. Um, for now, some of the matches uh, outside River State have been peaceful uh, groups going to INEC and, you know, you have all these protest matches everywhere down all the way to the uh, United States, even Washington, where you are seeing, you know, protests of all. For now, it should not be. Yes. Well, yes. For now, they are pro those protests are, you know, they're very, they look very normal and uh, uh, they are not violent yet. Uh, but uh, the courts, the tribunals actually would be the places where this party's elections are going to have the kind of redress uh, they are looking for. Uh, they just have to have faith in the judiciary, especially those who are aggrieved uh, to, to go to court. Because, I mean, at this point, you can't just rest power uh, by force or by, the, by, by going to the street. Of course, you can register your disgust and register your pain, register your, you know, your grief and all of that on the street. And when you go to INA with placards and all of that, you are registering uh, your annoyance. But the real job of, you know, if you think you've been uh, cheated and or you'll be, you be shortchanged, the real job of getting power back is to go to those courts, go to those tribunals, and have faith in the judiciary, get the right materials uh, that will help your case, assemble the team that will be able to get you the victories from the courts. Because that's, that's the that's only way in a that Tony yes. is having to exactly. get those materials. Of, sadly, yes, but uh, in, in a democracy, that's the only other thing open. You don't, you, uh, you actually can do it by just protest. Uh, this protest, we have to stop at a point, uh, and then, of course, uh, the, the, you know, the legal or judicial means of reclaiming, if you, if you say it's a it's reclaiming mandate or whatever you call it, we have to go to those uh, levels to do it. It's a stark, the stark reality uh, that you know these campaigns and these politicians face at this point. Not just the politicians, but the rest of us who feel that a better day should have been instituted. Uh, we've got only those courts and the judiciary to actually believe in and uh, you know hope that they will do the right thing. Mm -hmm. All right, Rano, before we let you go, let's talk about the first indictment of a former American president. Yep. Donald Trump is in New York already. In an hour or two, he will head out of Trump Tower and be uh, and surrender the office of the Manhattan um, District Attorney. And then later, he will be arraigned at the Manhattan Criminal Courts building. He says, one, whatever those charges are, he's pleading not guilty. And two, he believes that, look, this political witch hunt is actually going to boost his popularity come 2024. Do you agree with him, Emmanuel? Well, I talk with when you say he surrendered. It's almost as if he was resisting. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's going to you know, surrender well, he's going soon, to sur surrender. In, well, in an hour or uh, so. Well, I think more or less he actually just honored the invitation. He's being invited I mean, he has to, no choice. Yeah, he has no <laughs> at this point, yeah. So maybe surrender is the, is the right word. But, and he's going uh, to he's have not, his mock shot taken. Mock yeah, mock shot. shot. The yeah. mock shot that he's yeah. actually looking forward to exactly. himself. And and fingerprint. And, yes, fingerprint. He's looking forward to his base. is actually rally, uh, you know, he's seen this as some form of campaign already, you know, exactly. for him. And he's saying that this will only boost his popularity uh you know it will only you know energize or even anger his base for that like you say that like they will say that it's political witch hunt and all of that he he's been saying that save face well yes he, he will do all of that but again there are people that will be fact checking on those uh you know those charges uh, each one of them because it's going to be in the open of course and then fact check whether it is true he's guilty of some of the things that's been said of course uh everybody knows about the hush money and the crisis of uh, uh, Stormy Daniels that he's been dealing with over the years, but how this will now, you know, at, you know, affect his political career altogether. Himself, he believed that this is just going to be a boost and not, it's not going to in any way uh, stop his momentum. But uh, after today, probably uh, there will be those who will think that look, 
uh, they cannot gamble their future over someone that is probably facing, you know, a, the jail term or, or anything. Maybe uh, there will be a shift in his popularity, but that remains to be seen. For today, he's upbeat. He thinks that the mock shot itself is going to be uh, the best poster that he can get. And, um, you know, in Trump's style, trying to see whether he can actually turn this into That's daytime drama <laughs> and, you know, uh, turn it into some kind of uh, show for himself. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, like the uh, apprentice, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that oh, was he's, a yeah, he's, he's an entertainer himself. Uh, what, so, what do you call that yeah. kind of show? What do you call it again? I'm trying to remember. Well, he's, he's trying <laughs> to see I'm how sure. much, um, you know, uh, drama quality he can get out of it and, of course, put himself stuck in the middle of uh, what is clearly a political drama on its own. And with the whole world watching for the first time, it's historic uh, that the former president is, is going to be actually charged in this manner. It is. Thank you so much, Emmanuel Bello there. That was a press preview. Let's share your views on all the burning issues. Follow us on, uh, follow us on Twitter at Arise TV.